Archaeologists are incentivized by the fees they receive for successfully handling a sarcophagus up to resurrection. However, there is also a big disincentive for improper node operation. This is known as a slashing event. Slashing events occur when any malicious activity is done by the archaeologist. There are three main reasons when a slashing event would occur, but first we must understand what a resurrection grace period is. The resurrection grace period is the amount of time given to the archaeologist to decrypt the outer layer of the sarcophagus. The length of time of the resurrection grace period is 240 blocks, or about one hour. If a resurrection occurs outside of this time, then a slashing event occurs. Let's go through the three scenarios. The first reason is that the archaeologist unwraps the sarcophagus prior to the resurrection time set by the embalmer. The next reason is that the archaeologist unwraps the sarcophagus after the resurrection grace period. And finally, the archaeologist does nothing at all. In short, unwrapping too early, unwrapping after the grace period, or not unwrapping at all results in a slashing event. Now that we know what caused the slashing event, we can explain the four effects. The first effect has to do with the bounty fee. The bounty fee represents the payment the archaeologist receives for a successful resurrection. This fee is locked to the contract until that resurrection occurs. In the case of a slashing event, the bounty fee is returned to the embalmer. Then we get to the digging fees. These fees are locked to the contract to pay for the time between mummification and the resurrection. They are only released to the archaeologist at the next rewrap or upon resurrection. In this case, they are burned and gone for good. Before we get into the next two effects, we need to understand what a cursed amount or bond is. The bond is the collateral an archaeologist puts up for the service being offered. It is calculated using three parameters the digging fee, the bounty fee, and the reserve requirement. The calculation is as follows. Bond equals the digging fee plus the bounty fee multiplied by the reserve requirement. This cursed amount or bond that is put up is burned from the network upon a slashing event. Finally, the reserve requirement goes up. The reserve requirement is meant to capture the malicious activity proportional to the network. This activity is captured as the malicious volume for the previous 175,000 blocks, or about a month worth. The reserve requirement is represented by a percentage, with the lowest reserve requirement being 10% and the highest being 100%. If there is any malicious activity, then the reserve requirement will go up, causing a higher bond requirement. Let's walk through the network effects of a slashing event. We can see the below archaeologist had a digging fee of 10, a bounty fee of 100, and a reserve requirement of 10%, or 0.1. Let's say there is rampant malicious activity, and the reserve requirement skyrockets to 100%. This archaeologist went from only having to post a bond of 11 sarco to a bond of 110 sarco. They need to cover the entire amount. This is really where the slashing events can taint the network but in the same breath, disincentivize bad acting. Slashing events work as the check to nefarious nodes. Also keep this in mind. There are metrics on each archaeologist node that are publicly available. If a node has many unsuccessful sarcophagi, then it should and will be avoided, thus pushing traffic to the good acting archaeologists.